Uh, it's me. Um, I knew I was going to make it, you know. Um, I just felt like we didn't have nothing to lose. Like the whole game, uh, I just played like I wanted to win, you know. I didn't have no conscience out there. So, uh, and I'm, I'm definitely glad the coach called C, you know, because that's the, that's the play for me to come off in the corner. And I was just glad that he called my number and I could uh, respond the right way and make the shot. After the play that came before it, uh-huh. were you thinking at all about kind of redemption for that? Oh, not at all. Like I just said, from the tip off, uh, I didn't care about nothing tonight but winning. And uh, I think it showed, you know, with, with that final shot. But um, yeah, I wasn't worried about me missing that last shot, coming up short on the rebound, fouling, giving them the free throw, putting them up. I'm not gonna say it's like I don't care, but you know, we got to move on next play. That's what Coach teaches us. And uh, when he called that play, you know, I knew it was my time to step up. And uh, I knocked down the shot. <laughs> Derek, that after. Goodson's miracle shot against Stack there. Thought you might build some momentum. Then came, then came the trip to, to Michigan. Did it seem like you can regain some momentum to yes, a winning shot now? There's Definitely. Still time. There's still time. Yeah, it's, it's still time left. Definitely. You know, even if we would have lost this game, we still would have, you know, kept fighting. That's all our coach has been preaching. Just keep fighting. And, us getting this win, and we have another game on Saturday. We can get that win. You know, we can get things rolling back again. What was said at the start, though? They they came out fast. Th- was it thirteen to nothing to start? Was there much said on the bench or during that those timeout during the timeout? Yeah, it was a lot said. You know, coach said that we came out flat. You know, nobody was talking. So you know, I try, we tried to tell everybody to talk more, attack more, be more aggressive. You know, we got to get rebounds and get stops. You know, we we had a slow start, but. We, uh, we got it rolling after a while. Are you that type of player that could hit three twos? I mean, you, it was your, it was your baskets that really start, jump started this offense after the big, after they opened with those first 13 points. I mean, I was just being aggressive, you know. It could be me tonight, it could be Darren the next night, it could be Dev another night. It's just our team is so deep that, you know, you don't know who is going to be on any given night. You know, I just wanted to go take good shots. Um, p- make good passes, play good defense, and uh, just play hard. That's all Coach asked for is to play hard, no matter through mistakes or whatever, just play hard. Well, there was a lot of turnovers tonight, didn't you? <laughs> it seemed like they was just throwing the ball straight to me. <laughs> <laughs> was there a point where you felt like you were on and this was going to be your night? Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of. once I made, uh, I think I made a, two threes in a row or something like that, and then I made a, a jumper, you know, I just – just wanted to keep playing aggressive. You know, it's not just me. It's about the team. So I just wanted to keep playing with my teammates. Uh, Derek, how much do you guys uh, feel that the press, they're down 13 guys in the press, forced them into, like, I think, three turnovers in a row? How much do you guys think that affected the game? Um, I actually think that was a turning point. You know, we came we, we came in and we got three steals, like you said, or, or turnovers. You know, and that's what started us to kind of rally and fight back, you know, us we so deep that we can we can press like that. You know, we can we can different people can play different spots. So once we created all those turnovers, that started us to help us come back inch by inch. Yeah, you didn't start tonight for the first time. Was that a Um a little bit, but not really. You know, I just wanna win. You know, if, if me coming off the bench helps us win, then I'm all for it. I just wanna win, you know, and, and coach told me when you get in the game, be aggressive. So I just wanted to be aggressive coming off the bench or starting. I just want to win. Any other questions for you guys? Dev, you had that crazy shot at the end of the game. You know, you know, talking about Darren's shot. You know, last last mm-hmm. week against Akron. You know, what is it about the maxim that makes shots like that so magical? I mean, it, it's definitely something special about playing here at the at the house. Um, you know, we normally don't don't do too much losing at home, and, and it's not really been the case this year. So. I just really want to come out and, and try to get back to that, try to get back to, 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 to Kent State basketball, doing what we was doing. Uh, Darren hit a great shot. You know, uh, I wasn't really thinking about that at all, but um, until after he had came up to me and he was like, welcome to the club, you know? <laughs> so uh, it was definitely, definitely felt great to hit that shot. Can I say something? I've seen him make this shot all the time in practice, so it's not really that magical to me. You know, I've seen him make it all the time. <laughs> Pre-game shoot around, you guys looked really free, like nothing was wrong. What was your guys' mindset coming into the game today um, to get back on that Michigan trip? You know what? It, it was to turn it around, and I can't really speak for everybody, but um, like I said, 
my mindset since pregame, since tip off, was just focus on on, on winning and, and not caring about nothing. I wasn't thinking about the two losses or or, or not starting anymore or, or coach changing the lineup. Uh, I just wanted to get back to winning, and um, I think I showed that. You know, with my attitude, I, I didn't let anything else you know bother me. Fouls, foul trouble, playing. I just wanted to. At the end of the at the end of the game, I just wanted to get that win. You know, and I wanted it bad. Final question for these guys. Did you uh, give coach any signal in that last huddle that you were gonna make it no matter what? Um, no, but you know, I know he kind of he he trusts me a lot, and um, like I just said, I, I was glad that he called that C the C play because it's my number, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to step up. And, uh, um, you know, obviously that was a huge shot by Dev uh, late. To, to win the game for us. Uh, the two guys that you had in here, Derek and Dev, they both stepped up and played very, very well. Uh, really happy for how we competed and, and continue to compete when things weren't going well. We, uh, we obviously started the game off uh, really poorly. That goes without saying. And then the second half, they started the second half well. And we were able to battle back and continue to, uh, to fight and scratch and claw and do the things that uh, we're accustomed to doing here and get a win. So really happy that we got a win and now we got to move on and, and uh, get ourselves ready for Saturday. Question? Bob, I, I asked Derek about last week. There is still time in, in this, the way this conference is yeah. going this year. There, this, this, there's still time for things to happen. Yep. For, even, for, even for Kent. Yep, yep. And you know what? Our, our focus you know, has to be just on getting better and improving and trying to, to win each night that we're out. Uh, you know, I, I don't want these guys thinking in a bigger picture other than just, we got Saturday's game, let's try to win Saturday's game and see what happens. Do we move up in the standings a little bit? Yes, no, what, let's see what happens. And uh, we dug ourselves a hole, you know, in conference play. We, we lost at home to Northern Illinois at the buzzer, similar to how we won this one, or not quite at the buzzer, but close. We lost uh, in overtime to Central Michigan. Uh, we lost a three-point game to Toledo when we were up, I think, at the last media timeout. We lost at home to Ohio in a five-point game when uh, you know, we were tied with five minutes to go. And they hit. we missed a three. They hit a three. We missed a three. They hit a three. And um, you know, we just we dug ourselves a hole here. And it was good to see us compete the way I think we're capable of competing tonight. And, um, you know, we just need to continue to do that moving forward. Quick comment, please, on uh, Cameron Black. Can, can yeah, you know what? He played a, a great game tonight. And, uh, you know, he, he was very, very good. And you could see he wanted to play well tonight. And they went to him. And uh, he, he played very well. And he's a good player who's had you know, a very solid career at, uh, at Bowling Green. I don't know him personally very well, but he, he seems like a good kid. I know his dad a little bit, uh, and his dad's a good man, so, uh, and is a very good coach. Uh, go ahead. No, so you know what, good, kudos to him for, for playing the way he played. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I'm assuming that Dev's first three was not what you call a timeout to set up. No, the, you know what? We just wanted uh, a drive and kick. When there was, we, we had the ball. And the, I think there was a difference in shot clock of six seconds or seven seconds, seven seconds it was. And we, we called the timeout. I think there was about 15 seconds to go in the shot clock, if I'm not mistaken. And we just wanted, we had our play with Dev being spotted in the corner. And if Chris Brewer couldn't turn the corner, then he was to kick it to Dev to, okay. to shoot it. And I would have been, I was fine with the shot that Dev took. Okay. Um, and, and as it ends up, the fact that he shot it a little bit early gave us some more time to get the ball back. But I was fine with the shot that he took. I was not fine with the fact that, you know, he misses the shot. He's not an offensive rebounder. My point, and, and it was one of the things we said in the huddle, okay, Dev, Chris Brewer, you guys, no matter who shoots it, you guys are sprinting back to not give up a transition basket because there's a six-second differential. Even if we had shot it, with one on the shot clock, they still would have had plenty of time to drive it down our throats and, and score at the buzzer. So uh, the shot was fine. He, 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 he came up a little bit short, but then he chased his shot and he did foul the kid. Like, you know, I mean, he, he I'm sure 
had had I, I don't know wh who was it Parker if I'm not mistaken Parker I think had he, had Parker not sort of fallen out of bounds maybe they wouldn't have called it but they were forced to call the foul and he did foul him and at that point I you know if, if we had lost the game I would be pointing to you know we we talk about little things all the time that would have been a little thing like hey when you shoot that you have to sprint back and you gotta you gotta do what you're supposed to do but as it turns out. He makes both free throws. There's enough time in the game that Chris Brewer drives it. It goes off of them, and Mark kept it alive, and then he's able to make make up for it by hitting that three. Well, what I was getting at actually yeah. was the fact that you called his number again. What, what yeah. Was the thought process well, that? you know what? With three seconds to go, I don't have a timeout, and we we have three or four different out of bounds plays quick, and he 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 had been shooting it pretty well, and we had another out of bounds play that I. I I thought that they were sort of on, which would have been for Derek Jackson, and I thought that we had run that a number of times, and we couldn't get shots off from it. So Debs hit that three a number of times in terms of in practice. He's also hit it in games a number of times off that call, and uh, you know, fortunate that that he stepped up and shot it and uh, shot the ball with confidence. And, and again, so the the one thing about Dev, and there's a lot of things that I uh, that I want to kill him about. But he, he does have a lot of mental toughness. And for the two years that he was here as a freshman, he barely played. As a sophomore, he played just a little bit. And there were times where I was ruthless on him because I didn't know if he was ever going to make it here as far as having uh, the toughness to do it. And he fought through. And I'll give him a ton of credit for, for being able to make that shot. Um, coming off the bench, knowing that he's lost his starting spot, et cetera, et cetera. I'll give him a, a ton of credit for making it. And, I think they were checking how much time was left on the clock because oh, okay. they called timeout right away. Yeah, because I saw yeah. that neither one of you had yeah. a timeout. And also, it, it seemed like with the bench exuberant. Yeah, I would have killed Marquis. I was close to killing Marquis. If, if they had called the technical That's foul, that, yeah, no, I would have killed him. Yeah, a we had. A veteran referee like Mike Sanzier could easily have called him. Yeah, you know what? I, yeah, I actually think a veteran. Referee is not going to call it if that makes sense. Some some others might have called the technical. I don't know. I think they had stopped. What happened is the officials had immediately stopped the clock to see how much time was left on, mm -hmm. and we've actually been in this situation a couple times. In in my car career here at Kent, um, the Akron game had happened, and again we showed film on that one, and that's what I that's why I would have killed Marquise if they had called the technical because we had just talked to him about that a week ago. Um, but we've also been in other games where guys, guys have run, I mean, I, I have a clip in my head of Brian Howard, this was 10 years ago, sprinting onto the floor and then sprinting back. And if very rarely will they call a technical on that, but they do occasionally. If you're, if he had sprinted all the way to half court, they probably did. And our assistants and our GAs and everybody did a good job restraining Marquise. That's who mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We talked about before the game about how crucial it was to get more production out of your bench. Yeah. And you got that 45 to 2 number. Mm -hmm. and how encouraging is that to see? Yeah, and, and some of that's because Derek is Derek didn't start this game, but Derek's been a starter every other game of the season. Um, but but it's it's important. It's those are those numbers are important, especially you know Bowling Green doesn't play. They're not very deep. They don't play a lot of guys. So that's going to be a way for you to beat them. Is that you have to. Um, you have to have some bench scoring. Yeah, that's an important pa factor when you play when you play their team. Can you explain what was said after that thirteen nothing lead, Bowling Green established, and you called the timeout? What was said in that huddle? I can't say that out loud. <laughs> no, I'm just you know what. There's a lot of game. And, you know we just we, we have to come to play, and you got to grind it, and you can't try to get thirteen points back in one play. So it was more a matter. And you know what, we did make a big run, and we took a lead twenty two twenty one, and then I sort of felt like not that we took the foot off the gas, but our guys relaxed a little bit. And when we relaxed, then they took the lead again. And you just can't play that way. And uh, we've struggled with that at times, you know, here this season, is that when when we're playing on all cylinders for a number of minutes, we, we just we don't keep that pressure on teams consistently. And you got to do that to win in this league. Coach Derek Jackson, after I point points, yeah. It's always good to get the stat like that. You know, how proud of you were of his play? Today? Yeah, as much as anything, you know what? He this is the first time that he wasn't that he didn't start. Um, 
and the fact that he responded the way, you know, that, that's the response that uh, I, I remember twice during the year last year, I didn't start Randall Holt for different reasons, and he responded that way. Once last year, I didn't start Chris Evans, and he responded that way. There were times when Justin Green was a senior and Mike Perini was a senior and Scooty Guyton were seniors that I didn't start them for various reasons, and they responded the right way. And that's 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 what you expect out of an upperclassman and a, and a kid that you rely on. So he did it. He he responded the way I would hope he did, and I'm proud of him and happy for him that that he that he played as well as he did.